Thank you everyone for joining us. And we will begin second Sunday. Hi everyone, we're so excited to have you here. Welcome to Second Sunday Family Art Making. Today we have a wonderful activity prepared for you and lots of special guests joining. We've temporarily closed our museum doors to help keep our community healthy. Today's program is about 30 minutes long. Please visit the Cantor website to download the PDF instructions for today's activity if you'd like. A recording of this program will also become available there. Now I'll introduce you to our Second Sunday team. Say hi when I call out your name. Today we've got Diane. We have Aubrey. Hi everyone. We have Amy. Good morning. We have Juliana. Hey there. Osana. I'm delighted to see you. And Alyssa. Hello. Now that you've met everyone, let's dive right into the art making. Hi, I'm Amy, the Director of Programming at the Anderson Collection. Want to know more about the artist's inspiration? The artist Nick Cave talks about creating his first wearable sculpture, a sound suit, as a response to the LA riots in 1991, protesting the injustices and mistreatment of Black people in our country. We see similar things happening right now all around us, and Cave reminds us how important and personal these experiences are. The Anderson Collection hosted an exhibition of Nick Cave's work in 2017, including many of these wearable sculptures, sound suits. Cave visited the museum, talked about his work, and met with students. You can watch the talk on our website. Now, let's listen to the artist himself. My first question is that the sound suits are so joyful in person, but I understand they have a much more somber origin. Could you just talk a little bit about how you made the first one? You know, uh, yeah, the first sound suit happened in 1992. It was in response to the Rodney King incident, uh, which is sort of connected to the LA riots. And uh, so that was really sort of the sort of nemesis that sort of got this sort of body of work off the ground. Uh, prior to that, I was doing really large constructive paintings. And then, you know, it's amazing how something so profound can sort of literally sort of shift your sort of direction of thinking and making and, and uh, what have you. So it was, the first one was made out of all twigs that I uh, happened to be in the park and I was just sort of thinking the intensity of just what I was reading about uh, and sort of sort of experiencing that, that uh, the LA riots was so difficult for me and particularly as a black male and um, and so it made me start to think about, you know, looking at or the ideas of feeling sort of uh, devalued, less than uh, dismissed. And so I started to think about materials in that sort of same sort of way. And so I was in the park and I looked down on the ground and, I was, and there was a twig and I don't know, I just started collecting this abundance of twigs in the park and then started to build this sculpture and didn't really really think about that I could put it on until once it was completed and then I put it on and moved in it and then it made sound and so that was the sort of beginning of, of the sort of body of work so really sort of building and making these sort of secondary skins or these sort of um, suits of armor protection things of that sort that's what I was Okay, now that we've heard from the amazing artist, Nick Cave, let's make our own sound suits. Here are some ideas to get you started. You need not buy anything new. Nick Cave uses everyday objects such as bottle caps, twigs, raffia, and buttons, and more. Cover your arms and legs. It's easy if you use socks or tights. Connect things to make sound and decorate your suit using tape, safety pins, paper clips, clothes pins, twist ties, string, yarn, or even rubber bands. Make some sound. What can you add to your suit to make sounds? How can you move your body to make different sounds? Hey 
Have you ever seen art that makes sound, sculpture that moves, a suit that is made from household objects? What is your sound? Is it quiet or loud? Are your movements sharp or smooth, slow or quick? How do you move to make sounds? Here is a sound suit that I made. Let's listen to the many different sounds it makes. Also, while you watch, think about the dance. Does the dance tell a story? Here are the steps to get you started on your art making adventure. Gather material to cover your entire body. Be safe. Make sure you have good airflow around your face so that you can breathe and so that you can see where you are dancing. Attach things to your suit that make noise when you move. Dance around and explore your own unique sounds. Show how you feel. Ask someone to make a video of your dance and then share it with us, please. We'd love to see it. Hi everyone. Wasn't that so cool to learn about? I'm sure you're all excited to get making. To give you even more inspiration though, we will show you how we all have interpreted this project. Through this, you'll be able to see the different ways your sound suit can look and maybe even get more ideas. Hi, I'm Jensen Neff. I made my sound suit out of objects I found around my house. I liked finding things in my home that I hadn't thought of or seen for years and coming up with ways to incorporate them into my suit. When I'm touring Nick Cave Sound Suit at the Canter, I always ask visitors what they think it would feel like to be inside the suits. What would it feel like to be hyper visible and at the same time have their identity completely hidden? I definitely felt both a sense of invisibility and invincibility when I was in the suit, like I was a made up character. Something I never thought about until making my own makeshift suit were the moments of transition the process of putting the suit on and taking the suit off. I was aware of how it felt going from being completely seen to completely hidden in the process of becoming visible again when I was taking the suit off. Nick Cave originally developed the sound suits as a form of metaphorical armor after the horrific police beating of Rodney King in 1991. The transition moments making my own suit made me think about the levels to which different people have to cover themselves up or alter their identity to feel powerful or even just safe. And how many people in our country still feel vulnerable in their own identity. Hi everyone. For my sound suit, I wanted to make a body of armor for myself, like what Nick Cave described in his videos. When I think of a body of armor, a knight wearing metal and holding a sword is the first thing that comes to mind. But mine is pretty different, right? Even though I'm not fighting dragons every day, I need to protect myself from people who can sometimes be mean and say hurtful words. And when that happens, thinking of and talking to my family makes me feel better. A hug from my mom or a call from my sisters always helps. So my body of armor is made up of clothes from my family. The black shirt is from my older sister, the dress is from my younger sister, and the scarf is from my mom. When I wear this, even if it looks a little silly, I feel powerful. I hope that you can make a suit that makes you feel powerful too. 
My body of armor also makes sure that I don't stand out too much, and it's not very loud. Instead of hearing the noise from the suit, you hear me dance. You hear when my feet slide along the ground and when I change positions. I really love ballet, so I decided to use it in my performance. When I dance, I feel very free and beautiful. I don't make any large movements, not because I didn't want to, but because I'm wearing a dress and if I lifted my legs, you would have been able to see my skin. I could have worn pants, but I feel so much more comfortable wearing skirts and dresses. And above all, I wanted to make sure that I was comfortable. I hope you can all make a suit that makes you feel comfortable and beautiful too. I had so much fun and I hope you all do as well. Hi, my name is Alyssa and here's my sound suit. Um, I really was not sure what I was going to be able to put together because I don't have very many things, but the really awesome thing about making a sound suit is that you don't need as much as you think you do. Uh, so I wish you luck on your own sound suit endeavor. This is my sound suit. I used everyday objects and I didn't actually use any tape or fasteners. I was able to tie everything on with socks or using the fabric itself. On top of my head, you can even see a plant. I really enjoyed dancing in the suit because I was listening to all these new sounds that I could make by using my feet and my hands in different ways. I felt very strong when I was in this suit, like I could do anything. The style of dancing that I'm doing is called Irish dancing, which is a little bit similar to top dancing and the noises that it makes. So I was curious at how I would be able to interact with those noises in the suit. When parts of my suit moved like this, I was able to make new sounds. So surprised that the plants never came off my head.
the canter the last year or so, really enjoying it. And I just tried to make my sound suit, um, a la Nick Cave. Um, and yeah, I just did not realize I am not a spring chicken. Like I cannot twirl around like that with a bunch of clothes on and a pinata. That was awful. Like you felt really sick. So yeah. Um, I would say before you make your own sound suit, um, maybe do some blocking. Think about the moves because I was caught totally unprepared trying to like do that on the fly and then felt really sick. So, but at least my dog helped me. Here she is. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah. Thanks to the canter for letting me help with Nick Cave Second Sunday and hope y'all got a laugh and maybe something else out of my <laughs> sort of take clothing and tie it in knots, apply things to it. There's plastic, there's metal lids from bottles, and, and you know, I'm just thinking like electrical wire and stuff. Really just how do you sort of take these materials and how do you negotiate what the potential is within a material? How do you take a bottle cap and, and make it extraordinary? Let's start making some stuff right now. Thank you. So I'll start out with one of the questions, um, and this is open to all the different panelists. Um, what did you learn while doing this project? I can go. I feel like I learned how difficult it can be to move maybe um, while I'm in my sound suit. I think Juliana touched on this during her video too, but I definitely second it. I think if I were to remake mine, I would definitely want more ability to see because when I was doing ballet, it was really hard to spot where I was and what I was doing because I didn't know where I was. <laughs> so I think if I could redo the project, I would definitely want to make make sure I have more eyes, like I could see better, for sure. So I think that's something I definitely learned. Aubrey, I loved your your video um, and your project, and I think, um, and also like your expressions of the meaningfulness and, you know, coming from family and all these things, the different pieces that you're assembling. I thought it was so beautiful. But yeah, moving, then moving in it is like the next thing, because then you're, you have to move in it, which you did very eloquently. And like I said, yeah, I discovered twirling around in my studio, not super fun for me. Uh, so yeah, be careful with that. But. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's just so great. So, um, so make sure you have some eye, make sure you can see y'all before you start dancing. But that'll be, I think that mesh will work really well. I think if you have a thinner scarf, that would work really well. Um, Perhaps, go ahead. That's a pro tip, because you're saying you can still see through it. That's a great idea. Yeah, so. And Mackenzie, we have some questions in the chat. Perfect. Um, one of them is, how did you get inspired to create your own sound suit? That's a good question. I can go briefly about a little bit of what I was thinking when I was creating. At first, I was just looking for whatever materials I could find and trying to trying them in different positions. So I put some things on my shoulders, and then I was like, "No, I should put those on my legs, or um, I should put the I should hold the plant." And I was like, "No, why not put it on my head?" So it was really experimental, and it was all about the process, the process of discovery and thinking about what sounds they might make in different locations was really inspiring to me when I was creating. Yeah. Um, I can also answer. I feel like for me, 
I was a little worried about this project because when I think of a sound suit originally, I was thinking so much about how I have to make noise, but mm -hmm. I see myself as more of like, more, I don't know, maybe not shy is the right word, but definitely someone who prefers quiet. And so when I learned, when Diane told me about like this idea of quiet noise and like the fact that even if you're not making super loud noises, but you're still making a statement and you're still participating in this project, I really liked that. And that's where I got, that's why I decided to wear like more normal clothes for my sound suit. I love that. We also have another question in the chat. Um, how do you breathe in art slash costumes? Can you help answer this? <laughs> Go for it. Um, I think for me, I was able to, I buy a lot of fruit. Um, and the fruit that I buy is like in this season in bulk because you don't want to go out too often, you know? And so you end up getting like these boxes that have holes. So I think that helped me a lot. But something else that you could think about maybe is um, looking into like, I think breathable items, like um, certain types of cloths or like clothes um, really help so that you're not like suffocating in your suit. And that's definitely something that you can take into account when you're building it so that once it's made, you're not finding out that you can't breathe in it. So uh, that's a really good question. Definitely like a really valid concern to have. I do yeah. want yeah. to add to that just um, Joanna, person who asked this question. I just want to say that I appreciate it. Maybe I'm reading into it because that's what we do in the humanities. Um, but, you know, I think with the context of Nick Cave's work and L.A. and the Rodney King riots and everything that's happening today, you know, I don't want to be that person. But um, I think that that's a, that question to hold that question and think about how does one breathe in so many different contexts when one can't breathe, um, I think is really valid. So, yeah, I'm not want to turn the conversation back over to, um, you know, something lighter. But I think it's an important question and something that embodiment and you know really we all can have empathy and think about that right now across the country so thank you joanna <laughs> thank you so much juliana that's a great answer as well great addition we have another question what are you trying to express to people watching your video Can I answer that? Yes, please do, Diane. Well, um, when we were thinking about this project, what we really wanted to express is how artwork that you can come to the museum and see artwork that really has some kind of uh, meaning, a personal meaning, um, and also a meaning to the community at large. And it's something that you can really be close to and take to heart and get a response from. And you can try to do it yourself to, to get even more engaged with the, um, the work of art. So that's always the message we try to send on Second Sunday is to try to um, let people know that things in the museum are things that they can relate to and are things that really make connections on, on many levels. And so we want, although the museums are closed now, we really want you to come and see art in the museum and it is relevant to almost everyone. Just um, we want to make it accessible. So that was really the goal of our work. Thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. I have one last question. Um, what would you guys do differently if you were to recreate another sound suit? Feel like I've been talking so much but I just I've, I really enjoyed doing this project and I just have a lot to say um uh yeah I feel like I feel like actually for the first one it was definitely more of like what would make me comfortable doing this project that makes noise when like I'm someone who doesn't necessarily like to make a ton of noise but I think now that I've done it once if I were to do it again I would want to wear pants because then I think I'd be able to move a lot more, like also taking into account what I said earlier about like making sure I can see better. But I think if I have pants, I'd be, um, I'd just be able to like do a lot more movement, I think more easily. Um, and so I think that would be the change for me, would be adding in some pants. And I think also maybe adding in a little bit more noise, I don't know, but 
definitely the pants. Mm -hmm. I, mine is a little bit related to yours too, Aubrey. I was thinking that the style of dancing I was doing really focuses on the feet and the legs. And so most of my objects were on kind of my upper body and my head. So I was thinking if I were to recreate it again, I would try to attach more things to my legs to see what new sounds were made when I was doing the dance with my feet. Mm -hmm. cool. I love that. Really, the possibilities are endless. And I was so excited to see everybody's response to their own sound suit. And I was so interested in see how everybody moved in response to the suit. I noticed that um, Kwame's nee's suit, the arms were not even there. So the jumping up and down was the pogo jump was really um, very impressive. And, and the, the, the wormy kind of wiggles I thought were really fun. So those are all things that I would look at in my next suit, all the textures and things that people added. So I'm really inspired by the, uh, the makers and, and uh, they give me new ideas. Any last thoughts and questions? It's about to wrap up at 1130. And in case any of you guys wanted to um, reach out to us afterwards or share your art with us on Instagram, feel free to do that and tag us with at Cantor Arts and at Anderson.Stanford. Um, at, sorry, at Anderson.Collection.Stanford. And you can use the hashtag Second Sunday. Yeah, so thank you everybody for joining us. I want to give a big shout out to all of our panelists here today who helped put this all together. So you guys can unmute yourselves, say goodbye to everyone. And yeah, big thank you to everyone here. And then thank you to everyone who watched from home as well. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Thank you so much. Bye, have fun with your art. Yeah, bye everyone. until making my own makeshift suit were the moments of transition, the process of putting the suit on and taking the suit off.